Okay, time to script my next video. Let's get to work. Two hours later. What are you doing? I'm trying to figure out this damn intro. Why don't you use the fact that you're struggling with an intro as par as your intro? Come on. Oh, and I bet I should create another character so we can have a conversation so they know the context of the intro. Well, you could do, you know, whilst I'm drinking some water. <laughs> no, thank you. One minute later. The day I listen to you is the day I'll put a picture of what I used to look like as a kid when I used to wear pink and my sideburns wow. look so pointy it looks like something out of the 80s. <laughs> Shit. I was thinking the other day that I'm 31 years old and I've been playing video games for a very long time. I stopped a few years ago when I was building up my career and then when I finally earned enough money I then wasted it on a PS5. <laughs> yeah buddy. I was also thinking that there has been some amazing franchises that have stuck with me even to this day. There are franchises that have been around for such a long time that I think they should be dead. So let's run through these 17 gaming franchises that are dying or dead. In number 17, we have one of my favorite franchises with Uncharted. I remember being absolutely amazed by Drake's Fortune playing it on my lovely PS3 back in 2007 when I was around 15 years old. Lost my hair since then. For me, it was the first time a game built up a character with his own personality. Drake was so damn cool, witty, brave, and he had so much damn luck. <laughs> I loved every freaking game that came out and as technology developed, Naughty Dog had created one of the most insane IPs in history. We had Uncharted 2 in 2009 and then Uncharted 3 in 2011. Then we had the definitive ending of Drake with Uncharted 4 A Thief's End, which probably by far is my favourite game. Knowing that the story arcs and the characters that we have built relationships with, with Drake, Sully, Elena, Sam, Chloe are now done. And to solidify this, Naughty Dog and Druckmann stated that they are done with Uncharted. He said Uncharted was insanely successful. Uncharted 4 was one of our best selling games and we're able to put our final brushstroke on that story and say that we're done. It's probably the right choice, even though as a diehard Uncharted fan, you want to see more. What I would love to see is that they remake the first game or maybe the second game for the PS5 and it's actually a remake. I think that would be amazing. Some of you will probably say, no, we're done with remakes and remasters. It's safe to say that I believe Uncharted is officially dead. Move on. In number 16, we have a franchise that is so popular, it has a fan base, and that is Jack and Daxter. It was originally developed for the PS2 back in 2001. Then you had Jack 2 in 2001. 2003, Jack 3 in 2004 and then in 2005 and 6 you had Combat Racing and Daxter. What was incredible about this franchise is that it had no loading screens and to think all the way back then Naughty Dog was so innovative and one of the best developers that revolutionized gaming. Imagine hiding those loading screens back on the PS2 and looking at the gameplay for some of these games it makes me want to resubscribe to the premium tier because I know you can have access to some of those games. <laughs> So I'm thinking about it. Who needs money? Yeah. In 2012, they remastered the first original free so that you can play them in HD. And I was looking on Amazon and damn, is it expensive to purchase? Naughty Dog did toy with the idea of making a new game after the Uncharted games. In 2014, they released a concept art for the fourth entry in the series. But you never guess what? They never went into full production. Looking at this concept art, it is very different from the original. Would of fans like this concept that making it a bit more realistic? I'm not sure. Would you have wanted a more serious, more realistic look of Jack and Daxter? It's safe to say that this franchise is dead. 
In number 15, we have one of the best FPS shooters, and that's with Killzone. And to think I've only played Killzone Shadowfall. A lot of people said that's probably one of the worst games out of all of them. The reason why I couldn't play the other games is because my mum never let me. The series began on the PS2 in 2004 and then continued on to PSP in 2006 with Killzone Liberation. Killzone 2 was released for the PS3 in 2009 and then Killzone 3 in 2011. You had Killzone Mercenaries on the PS Vita in 2013, then of course, Shadowfall in 2013, which was a launch title for the PS4. There were so many people that wanted Guerrilla Games to bring back this franchise because it had such a big fan base. It's understandable that they're not really focusing on that now because of Horizon. You can understand they're putting all their eggs in one basket. And if you do hope that they're going to remake or bring back Killzone in the future, then you're wrong because they shut down the servers for Killzone Mercenaries and Killzone Shadowfall online. Just imagine if it was an online only game. <laughs> Let's give it a chance. <laughs> Why rock steady? I do think that that franchise is dead. Kapoish. Alabakushnik. And in number 14, we have Resistance. I remember the first game being launched with the PS3, and I just remember being amazed looking at this game. Now, I don't actually remember anything about the story because I didn't actually buy the game because when I was like 14, 15, I remember we couldn't afford much at home. I remember going to my friends and he had it, and I was just like, wow want this game. I remember eventually they bought out a cheaper PS3 and I bought that and I was so happy but I didn't buy many games for it. I just couldn't afford to. Damn, talk about putting a downer on the video. <laughs> no, no, I'm just, I'm just reminiscing of my younger days. You don't need to do that. Twat. What I loved about Resistance is that it took place in an alternate history in the 1950s and the alien civilization known as the Chimera have invaded Earth. In 2006 you had the first game and then in 2008 you had Resistance 2. You had Retribution that was made for the PSP and then Resistance 3 in 2011. And then in 2012 you had Burning Skies for the PS Vita. With this whole Microsoft Activision Blizzard deal and Sony going as hard as possible to stop this deal, I just think Killzone could be that one where they rebuild it, they make an amazing online, they make a full reboot. I don't get why Sony don't want to do that. They, they, they could choose like Killzone or Resistance. Imagine like rebooting those games and trying to compete with Call of Duty. In 2012, Insomniac published a video with Ted Price stating Resistance has reached a logical conclusion in terms of the story. It's been confirmed that they are officially done with this franchise and you know, they just booted them out just like some of my exes in this house. <laughs> You're the future mother of my children. Okay, I'm going to pay for that later. Now, in number 13, this is where the video is going to get a little bit juicy because it might cause a little bit of controversy. And with the internet and YouTube, you know that there's going to be some keyboard warriors. We're going to talk about The Last of Us Part 3 and hear me out. Oh, no. Whether you love this game or hate this game, it is a fact that The Last of Us Part 2 divided the fans like there was no tomorrow. Spoiler warning, just letting you know for Last of Us Part 2 and 1, all of it, so I'm warning you. It's not the fact that Joel died. I thought that he probably would die. It's the fact that how it came about. The sequence of events that happened that was so unrealistic, which was such bad writing, like the way Joel just trusts everyone. You end up playing as Joel's killer for half of the game. In what mindset would we want to do that? There will be The Last of Us Part 3 and we kind of know that. You made The Last of Us Part 2 Part 2. You then made a remaster of the original game calling it Part 1. Yeah, you know, a uh, remake. It's actually a remake. Yeah. It says, uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry, remake. Re they made a remake. You know, better expressions, graphics, so lighting, a few me. little changes here and there. Yeah, yeah, they made a full-on remake. <laughs> remake. Ha. In January of this year, Neil Dickman... Neil Druckmann stated, Our process is the same thing, which is if we came up with a compelling story that has this universal message and statement about love, just like the first and second game did, then we will tell that story. If we can't come up with something, we have a very strong ending and that will be the end. Then in April, he says he's come up with a story, but it's not in production yet. I wouldn't be interested in The Last of Us Part 3. Not if we're playing as Abby Zilla. I'm just trying to think, where could they go with the story? What could we do with Ellie that you haven't already done? You've 
taken everything away from her. You, you took her baby away from her. You, you took her finger away from her. You took the most important person that was her father figure in her life. You took that away from her. How much more misery do you want to bring to Ellie? I don't think there's going to be enough hype for part three because you divided the fans. I really do think it won't sell well. Don't think the series is dead. Let's all wait for season two. Let's just see how many of you like playing golf. At number 12, you're going to probably think, Neutro, what are you doing bringing up Pokemon? Pokemon's not dying. You deserve that. Here we go. This is the internet in real life. I freaking love Pokemon. I still have some of my Pokemon cards from when I was like 10. Pokemon has been around since 1996, 27 years ago. It has gone from strength to strength with its anime series, which I loved so much as a kid. As of March 24th, they are finally ending the series with Ash and Pikachu and they're gonna reboot it. This is just a moment in history. Like I am so sad that they're actually ending Ash. That's most of our childhoods. Now, the reason why I do believe this franchise is slowly dying now, just the games, just the games, is because of the latest games. Scarlet and Violet. I do believe Game Freak are just not capable to take the Pokemon franchise to the next level. Where we are with technology and games, there is no reason why Pokemon shouldn't be like Zelda Breath of the Wild. There should be freaking voice acting. We still don't have any voice actors. Well, we do know they want to save money and they can't be bothered to pay for voice actors, which would cost a lot more money. It's ridiculous that they haven't wanted to expand the series how they should. They're probably so pressurized from the card releases, from the anime, they need to keep to the these deadlines for some reason they'll be like nope you have to release this game during this time i don't care what state it's like it has to come out with the cards so there's no room for delay which is an absolute joke i truly believe the next couple of years for pokemon the games are super important i reckon it could be make or break because if you're just going to keep releasing stuff like this probably going to still sell i do think the gaming franchise is dying I do believe the quality of the games are going down massively is it dying you let me know now in number 11 we have one of my favorite franchises is that I remember playing this on my PS3 when I had a sofa bed and I thought it was cool to have a sofa bed but then when I actually put it as a bed I would fall into the middle gap and it was so uncomfortable and that is Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed is one of the best franchises that Ubisoft have made and they have taken a lot of strides to improve the game since the very first back in 2007. Now there's been a lot more games since then so I'm going to blitz through this. 2007 you had Assassin's Creed 1, one of my favourites. 2009 you had Assassin's Creed 2 with N Enzio Aldatori, probably my favorite character of them all. Brotherhood in 2010, Revelations 2011, Assassin's Creed 3 2012, Black Flag 2013, Rogue in 2014 for PS3 and 360, and then Unity also in 2014 for the PS4 and next gen at that time. We had Assassin's Creed Syndicate in 2015, Origins 2017, Odyssey 2018, and Valhalla 2021. And supposedly we're gonna have Assassin's Creed Mirage end of this year year. <laughs> Ubisoft have made a ridiculous amount of money with every installment, which means glitches. <laughs> You have half broken games that have been released with loads of microtransactions and cosmetics to make you look like Iron Man in Valhalla. As of January this year, you had Ubisoft stock drop into its lowest in seven years. Games being freaking delayed, Skull and Bones. <laughs> 10 years. They are literally putting workers under stress. And in recent response from the head of Ubisoft, Yves Guillemont, he basically said in an email to workers, the ball is in your call. The reason why I have mentioned this franchise is because Mirage for me will either be the turning point in Ubisoft where they start getting back to their old ways and producing amazing games, or this could kill the franchise coming out as a buggy mess. It might not. We haven't seen any game footage and supposedly it's coming this year. That just tells me that it needs to be delayed. I don't think it's coming out this year. They've delayed so many projects. This is a gaming franchise you do not want to ruin. I do think the Assassin's Creed franchise is dying. But number 10, we have one of the oldest IPs that made its appearance in 1991, Sonic the Hedgehog. It was 91 that Sonic first hit the shelves with the Sega Genesis, and wow, did that really boost the sales. There are so many games that Sonic has featured in, it's so overwhelming, but just take a look at how many games have been made for Sonic. 
god, no way. When Sonic Frontiers got announced, there was a lot of different thoughts going on because the game didn't look as polished. Now, I bought Sonic Frontiers, but I haven't played it yet because it's on my backlog of games. Sonic Frontiers got some very good reviews, and I do believe it was a fun game being an open world with some very unique bosses, and at the same time, still keeping to the old school Sonic. It still felt like a Sonic game. I don't think Sonic is dying. I just think it's mistreated. Maybe Sonic Frontiers is the turning point now that they've progressed the game. It's a fun game. It's a big risk that they took, but I think it's one that paid off. Now, in number nine, we have a character that on the PS1, I didn't have a crush to this female character that was pixelated more than anything. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Tomb Raider was first released on the PS1 back in 96 and to this day I still remember playing that game at my uncle's house. I believe there's been 12 Tomb Raider games and two spin-off games and according to tech news it has sold over 82 million copies. Fast forward to the modern day and I feel like Lara Croft has not been getting the treatment she deserves. I would treat her right. You had Shadow of the Tomb Raider released back in 2018 and judging by Metacritic it received great reviews from user and critic. I never played those games only because you know I miss quite a lot of the PS4 generation. Square Enix recently sold the rights of Tomb Raider alongside a number of properties. It's just crazy that they did this because it's like they don't even care. All they care about is NFTs. That is honestly why they probably sold these properties. It seems like Tomb Raider is in the right hands now. Let's just hope that this series can come back. It has been confirmed that Crystal Dynamics is working on a Tomb Raider game with Unreal Engine 5. So that is promising. But maybe I'll just revisit a Tomb Raider back on the PS1 on, on YouTube. Back to the one and only Ubisoft. I feel like this video is sponsored by Ubisoft. Let's remember how excited we was for Watch Dogs when that first announcement was made. I remember seeing that trailer and being amazed at this game. You could hack nearly everything, traffic lights, bollards, people's phones. And this was the time that Ubisoft was good. Even though they lied to us about the trailer, it looked much better than the actual gameplay. I only played the first game and by looking online, it was most people's favorites. There's been three games altogether and I did buy Watch Dogs Legion recently because I do want to give it a go but supposedly that's people's least favorite. What else is quite disappointing is that everyone that was working on the DLC is actually moved on to other projects now. And Ubisoft have stated that the game will no longer be updated as well. Because it's Ubisoft, I do believe that this game is fully dead. I don't think they're gonna bring this back anytime soon. I really hope so in the future. I think they've just got too much stuff to worry about. Their employees and skull and bones. Now at number seven, we are moving away from Ubisoft and we're gonna talk about Ubisoft. Far Cry has been one of the best FPS games for a very long time and again I remember playing the early Far Cry games and loving them. There's been so many I can't even remember. I did play Far Cry 6 because I hadn't played a Far Cry game in ages and I actually enjoyed it. And the reason why I liked it so much, I think the last time I played one was 2 or 3 so I missed quite a bit. A lot of people stated it was literally a cut and paste game. Checkpoints, upgrade weapons, shoot some people, follow the marker, kill the enemy, blah 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 blah. Typical Ubisoft. But if we check Metacritic is a whopping 4.9 and 73 critic which for this franchise is shocking because they are just focusing on selling, selling, releasing within a time frame. They are making some bad mistakes. I really don't think they're focusing on making another Far Cry game. They've got so much going on with their other games, Skull and Bones being delayed 7,029 times. <laughs> I think it'll be years before we see another Far Cry game. Who's at the door? Here you go, mate. I thought you ordered a nice cup of coffee. This is for you. Cheers, cheers, mate. Are you Australian? You sounds like a really bad accent. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, mate. I've been here and nice, there. You nice. know, Australia, yeah. a bit of here, a bit of there. It's a bit cold in this whole UK business, yeah. Mate, these English, I tell ya, they're a bit rude. All <laughs> been a bit of I'm not going to sit here and go on about how you can support the channel and buy me a coffee, blah, blah, blah. But I am over at Buy Me A Coffee. Or you could click our memberships. Uh, we've got quite a few people now. Shout out to Rafi, new member. 
Now we're number six, flipping Ubisoft. On the Nintendo Wii, one of my favorite games was Prince of Persia. The art style to this game, the gameplay, I really loved this game. Here is a list of Prince of Persia games there has been, and as you can see, there hasn't been a game since 2009. What was amazing is that Ubisoft said they were gonna remake one of the Prince of Persia games. Yeah! No. So this was the remake we was gonna get. It looks like they were giving responsibility to kindergartens to make this game with Nokia 3210s. That's probably an exaggeration, but it looks like a PS3 game. All that massive backlash, it was by no surprise they decided to just call the project off. They technically haven't cancelled it, but they've put it on hold. I truly believe this franchise is dead. There's no way Ubisoft is going to bring this back. They, they don't care enough some of their franchises. This is one of them. All right, what's next on this? This is ridiculous. What, what have we got next? Now, are we done with Ubisoft? I Need to check. Are we done with it? Uh, let me check the script. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah, we're done good, with Ubisoft. Good, good. I'm glad. What's wrong with these companies, man? Yeah, but the, the next three out of four are all from EA. Uh. Yeah. Now, we're number five. Let's talk about Madden 23. And you know a game is bad, even when you get professional <laughs> NFL players actually stating that this game is terrible, who are featured in the game. If you didn't know, EA release a freaking bad Madden game every year, and they always say they're going to do better. And the problem is, is because they're actually the only ones producing the game. They don't really care. We've got no competition, so let's just make it the worst project ever <laughs> and charge 60, 70 pounds or dollars. You've got the Metacritic review sitting at a whopping two out of 10. And as I said, you have the professional athlete stating this might be the worst Madden ever. I would say that this franchise is absolutely dead. But is it dead? Because they're the only ones producing the game. People will still buy it. I think eventually it will die. Surely it's got to die. Surely people are not still buying this game. It's like when you go around your mate's house and his little brother's always lingering around. It's like that every year. They're just going to, here you go. Here's the annoying little brother. So annoying. <laughs> Anyways. Now in number four, probably the most popular FPS shooters in history, Call of Duty, which I haven't played in quite a few years. And I don't really care to do so because it's the same game every year and I'm more of a story driven game and I don't really care for the multiplayer. Call of Duty has been around since 2003 and damn it was incredible in the early years. And as the years went on, it just got stronger and stronger. My fondest memories are with the PS3 Call of Duty with Modern Warfare. Everything about that game was incredible. Damn, this is my childhood. Hey, this is so much fun. This game is a fantastic. You better be in bed. I'm coming up. As the games have got even longer and more expensive to make, I still wonder how the hell do they keep up with these yearly releases. And with every yearly release, there is either some server problems or the campaign is so bad. It just makes me think, why are people buying this game? You had Call of Duty Vanguard, and that was probably the most unappealing Call of Duty game in a long time. It looked like the NPCs had the brain cells of a fish. And it just feels like they were running out of ideas. No one was excited for Vanguard. Fast forward to a year later and you've got Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, is it? Or I can't even keep up with these remakes or whatever. But it did make supposedly a billion in a weekend. It's still selling like hotcakes. I'm not going to say it's dying or dead, but I feel like it should be dead. But it isn't. Now, number three, we are back with EA and that's with Battlefield, another franchise just like Call of Duty that has a ridiculously large fan base. It all started in 2002 with Battlefield 1942 and as the years and technology developed you could see the graphical improvement from every Battlefield. Fast forward to 2023 and you would think that this franchise is thriving more than ever. Battlefield 2042 was one of the most anticipated games at the time and we all know what happened there. Bruh. Probably the most broken game to date alongside Cyberpunk and for a full price game, I am still disgusted how it was online and multiplayer only and they had no campaign. They did the fan pace dirty in this game and even though it's playable now, the damage is done. You have IGN report that Battlefield 2042 is less popular than Battlefield 1, 4 and 5 on Steam. Hey. 
Oh my gosh. Battlefield 1 was released in 2016. According to Industry Insider, the next Battlefield will be released at some point in 2024. And all I can say is, take your flipping time. Now in number two, we have another amazing franchise from EA, and that is the FIFA series. The FIFA series is a series I grew up with, and I would wait at Tesco at midnight to waste all the money I had to play in that game, and I wouldn't even go college the next day. Let's fast forward to the modern day, and it is such a shame that EA puts in as little effort as possible. They put all their resources of some money into Ultimate Team, which I am not interested in as I am an old school person. I don't play Ultimate Team. I don't buy these packs and bollocks. I want career mode. They make millions and millions a day on Ultimate Team packs and all this gambling, basically gambling for kids. And every game that comes out, it feels like it's the freaking same. Hyper Motion Technology. Hyper Motion Technology, the most advanced technology yet. You would not have felt this sort of way playing the old FIFA games. You may think it's the same. It, it is, but it's different. <laughs> A fresh new paint over the same game every year. New kits, new players, same freaking game. <laughs> we like to take your money. Now in number one, this does make me sad because I was a huge fan of Pro Evolution Soccer. As a kid, I chose this over FIFA any day when there was actually competition. Yes, it was annoying not having the rights to most of the teams or the right kits, but damn, nothing could beat you driving with Andriano with that left foot and boom! My gosh, it was 99 pace. As the years went on, FIFA just got better. Its gameplay got better and it had all the rights to the kits, stadiums, and Pro Evolution just got worse and worse. And to the point now that it's called eFootball and it's free to play. The graphics seem like they're getting better because the previous year looked like the footballers were on a nightclub having crack. It was actually kind of scary. They should have made that an 18. E-Football or Pro Evolution for me is gone. It's dead. And personally, I don't see a redemption for this game in any way. Even if they brought back Master League, the fact that it's free to play, there's limited stuff to do. FIFA is just taken over the market and there's no motivation to play this game. Maybe there might be some interest if they created Master League. I think this series is officially dead. What do you think of the games I've mentioned? Are there any I've missed out? Make sure to comment below and let me know. Well, let's take a look at the comment of the day from my previous previous video, Atomic Heart on PS5, an honest review. Shout out to Lugo, awesome video mate, I was confused on this game myself, looks amazing but it's also very convoluted and has a lot going on at once. But yeah, with Atomic Heart I just couldn't get into it, for me I just wasn't engaged enough until the end of the game when I found out what happened with the story, but yeah I won't be playing that game anytime soon. But anyways, this is a long ass video, I've been talking for one hour and this camera is still going, I don't know how it hasn't blown up. So I'm going to take a break. I'm going to play either Days Gone or Hogwarts Legacy because you guys made me play Days Gone and I'm absolutely loving the game. So I'm playing those until Resident Evil comes out on Friday. And so let's go out for dinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, right behind you, right behind you. You are not going on that PlayStation. <laughs> what the hell? Well, I'm a full-time YouTuber. <laughs> Research. <laughs> one of my favorite franchises. Had to turn the heating off there. Are we good? Say what now? What in, in, what in? Here you go, mate, I hurt you old. <coughs> I honestly think with this kind, oh, for fuck's sake. And I wouldn't go college in the next day. What I want you to do, Eleanor, soft for a new noon. Perfect. Feel sorry for you.